Hey guys, happy Sunday. Welcome to my channel, Run Free and Strong. I'm Rayto. I'm back at Larkin State Park for the uh, for my Sunday long run in Southbury, Connecticut. It's about 25 days out from my first ultramarathon, the Yeti 100 miler in Damascus, Virginia. And it's time for a test run to see how far can I go it's about 3 p.m. in the afternoon, so I have about five hours of daylight left. Gets dark around 8. And uh, yeah, let's see how far I can go. Uh, 15 miles, 20 miles, 25 miles. T today's not going to be about pace. It's going to be about how much distance can I cover in the five hours and how my body will feel throughout the five hour time period. Okay, let's get the run started. I've parked my car at one of the entrances to Larkin State Park. I'll be using that as an aid station and doing an out and back. Out about 3.8 miles, so an out and back about 7.6. And, uh, you know, rehydrating, re refueling, changing clothes at the quote unquote aid station in my car and see how it goes. It's a beautiful day today. Not super hot, in the low 80s, a little bit of a breeze, sunny. So yeah, it should be good. And looks like we have our first challenge ahead. A little bit of wet from the heavy rains. Just past the uh, two mile point and somewhere around 19 minutes. So average about 9.30 pace for the first couple of miles. Walking now uh, so that I can hydrate. I'm gonna try to hydrate every couple of miles or so. Uh, I've in the past hydrated every four miles and was severely dehydrated and struggled uh, on my long run. Put my GoPro away, start running again. Just past the uh, four mile point in about 40 minutes and 20 seconds. So about a 10 minute pace on average. That includes my walking. And just past the turnaround point at 3.8 miles. So heading back to my car, which is my aid station. And on the left there, beautiful, one of the uh, three ponds that I pass on the run and coming up here uh, we're gonna hydrate real quick all set hydrated and we're gonna head up one of my favorite parts of my run here this little gorge with some rock outcrops totally in the shade Kind of liking this. Two miles of running. Walk for a hydration break. And you know, average some run at 10 minute pace. So here we see the uh, uh, crops. Get care, be careful here. Pretty muddy on this trail. These are just stunning. Six miles into my run, heading back to my quote unquote aid station, my car. Passed six miles in 60 minutes. So, averaging, continued average, 10 minutes per mile, including my walks. So, that's pretty cool. And, uh, 
really beautiful day. It is warm, but the slight breeze makes it more bearable, takes some of the humidity out. So, really enjoying this run. When I run, I'm averaging about 9, 9 30 pace. So, with my walks, averages out, like I said, to about a 10 minute per mile pace. Coming up a little bit of a rocky for the trail here. This trail is so runnable. It's basically single track or double track or Jeep road as they call it. But here we go. Got a little bit of rocky terrain. Nothing bad. Just gotta keep my eyes on the trail. Make sure you don't trip be kind of bad so back at the car 7.6 miles an hour and 16 minutes doing a quick shirt change grabbing some more hydration a kind bar that I'll be eating on the way back and then let's get going again minimize the downtime uh, at the eight, at the quote unquote aid station, my car. So let's get rolling here. So heading back out, a little long stop, five minutes, made a couple of mistakes. This is part of the process of learning. Uh, eat my kind bar, kind energy, dark chocolate, and dark chocolate and peanut butter. Let's see how that goes down. And then we'll get running again. I was never very good at walking and chewing gum at the same time. So, walking and eating is about the same. So I need to practice. 10 miles into my run, about an hour and 45 minutes. So, nice pace, nice and easy. Uh, quick hydration break, and then get going again. Shorts are chafing me a little bit. It's never happened before. I normally change my shorts. This time I didn't at the at the car at the aid station. So when I get back down, about 15 plus miles, I need to change shorts. They can become very painful. Passing another pond, the beaver pond, on the left. Beautiful. Really enjoy this uh, rail the trail, the Larkin State Park rail the trail. Ready to go again. Keep these brakes relatively short. I'm trying to see if we're gonna average 10 minutes a mile, plus or minus. I think. For an ultra, for a 100 miler, 10 minute pace, 10 minute pace gets me in somewhere around 20 hours. So I think 14 minutes is a sub 24 pace. So we're gonna put the camera away here. And one last piece here. This is pretty here with these wildflowers kind of snaking through here. So I just left my car, my quote unquote eight station, stop number two, came in at 15.3 miles in about two hours and 38 minutes. Quick change, shorts as I mentioned they were chafing me, shirt, another hydration bottle, and we're gonna keep going. So, it's getting a little bit dark. 
see what we can get up to before it's uh, completely dark. I didn't bring my headlamp today. Eighteen miles in, three hours, ten minutes, thirty seconds, eighteen miles. Starting to feel a little bit uh, a little low on fuel, a little low on hydration. These are things that you know test run will help me figure out. Definitely. Um, very useful. So I'm gonna hydrate now and then uh, get going again. <clears throat> this is another really beautiful part of the Larkin State Park Rail the Trail. Uh, another gorge with this beautiful rock outcrops bordering the trail. Kind of carved in here. These, these soft hydration flasks are really great. Squeeze down, easy with the um, bite down nipples. Uh, Hydra pack. I think they also make the uh, Solomon uh, soft flasks. I squeeze them down. All right. 18 plus. Let's go. Another pond here. To the left. As I said, there are three along this uh, trail. Sun definitely starting to set. See how much daylight I got left. I'll determine how far I go. Uh, 21 miles in. Heading back to my car, AKA aid station. And uh, about three hours and 42 minutes. Starting to feel it. I'm uh, gonna try to wrap up. Back to the car should be about 23 miles. Add a couple miles to make it 25 for the day and see where I end up. I'll check back with you guys in a little bit. Okay guys, approaching the parking lot and about 23 miles not gonna lie this one was tough and the greater 15 thought i could do more 20 didn't feel so good the last three if it wasn't downhill it would have been a struggle so we're gonna call it 23 miles and four hours three minutes 15 seconds and that's gross time, not net time. You know, if I ran another two miles, it'd be about 420 to 423. So still below 430 for 25 miles estimated. All right, guys, I'm gonna drive home. Hey guys, welcome to my channel, Run Free and Strong. I'm Rayto. It's Labor Day weekend, Sunday, about 3 p.m. With about two and a half weeks to go, this will be my last long run and final dress rehearsal for the Yeti 100 mile ultramarathon in Damascus, Virginia. After today's long run, I'll be tapering for the next two weeks, dropping my weekly mileage uh, from 50 plus to 40, 30 for the week before uh, the ultra. It's important for me to make sure that I stay healthy over the next couple of weeks. No reason to take unnecessary risks, having invested so much in my training over the last 12 months, and with two, two and a half weeks to go, the haze in the bar. I mean, there's not much training-wise that I can really do, other than just tapering and making sure I avoid injury, and my legs, 
especially and my body is uh, recovered and fresh and ready to go. My workout today, I'd like to see if I can hit at least 20 miles and, and go longer if I can. My goal, my target is about 20. Uh, let's see what I can do. Uh, I will run my, my long run as usual on the Larkin State Park Trail in Southbury, Connecticut. I've parked my car at the trailhead on Route 188 in Southbury. I'll put the map up here. I'll be doing out and backs, a 3.8 uh, miles out same back so one each out and back is about 7.6 miles um and i'm using my car as the quote unquote aid station in air quotes and learning how to get in and out of aid stations as quickly and efficiently as possible and avoid any mistakes that cost me a lot of time so my aid station is basically set up in the back of my car And I've got my um, hydration uh, and a little bit of nutrition, uh, change of clothes, some towels uh, to protect the car for the drive home, and a pair of my Hoka ONA ONA Cavu shoes. The ones on the right are version one, the ones on the left are version two. I just upgraded from my Garmin 235 to a Garmin Phoenix 6 Sapphire which I'll be trying out for the first time today. I think I've completed most of the setup before the run. And uh, I also invested in a stride power meter. I've talked a little bit about uh, power output and developing uh, power uh, in the video. I'll put the link up here. I will be uh, using that as well today combined with my Garmin. I had some challenge about getting the uh, stride uh, set up before the run. I think it got partially through, but I wasn't able to complete the uh, the data fields uh, in the Garmin for the power uh, display. So hopefully it'll capture the data and we will see how that goes and the rest of the Labor Day weekend. I'll have time to play around with that and, and complete the setup. I will be attaching that pod. The pod comes in two parts. The, uh, the stride power meter itself and the clip that goes on the bottom uh, to laces. And uh, there's a little hole here that is uh, to measure the air, the wind. Important not to cover that up. I think it's supposed to fit through two laces. Yeah, it looks like, looks like it does. I will be snapping that on. Put the back in first, I guess, and snap the front in. Yep, until it clicks and then make sure it's secure. So what am I going to bring for the run? Uh, keeping it very simple, I have a Ultimate Direction Signature uh, Race Belt 5.0 that contains basically a uh, 600 milliliter flask and uh, my car keys and uh, some toilet paper. And then I have a uh, Nathan uh, belt. I tuck my GoPro camera uh, in that Nathan belt. And my brand new Garmin Phoenix 6 Sapphire and I have my uh, stride uh, power meter attached to my left shoe. I'm staring through your window looking up at the stars, up at the stars. I'm caught inside a loop where I can get to your heart, get to your heart So, gonna keep my runs easy. As I said, each out and back is about 7.6 miles. My run, my running, I will strive for 9.30 pace, all in, including my walks and my stop at my car. I uh, will bring it up to probably 10 and a half minutes per mile on average. So, nothing crazy. Again, it's about, can I go four or five hours? And how well I hold up, both physically and also mentally.
I'm about uh, two, almost two and a half miles until I run. Coming up on the first of three ponds on this route here, uh, Beaver Pond. To my left. Keeping it nice and easy. We'll walk at the three mile point, hydrate. So, more of that pond, standing water under the beavers, broke the dam and blocked it. Running through these wildflowers on the edge of the trail. Just hit three miles in 29 minutes. Uh, gonna walk a little bit, take a hydration break, and then get going again. All these, uh, um, these soft flasks, really easy to hydrate on the run. And they squeeze down, you know, easier to store. That was about a two minute hydration break. Trying to keep these short. About, you know, seven minutes at my car, the aid station. Uh, about two minutes for a hydration break. So that adds uh, over three miles. Adds, you know, 30, 40 seconds per mile to my split. So. This is the third pond, just past the turnaround point. Uh, four miles into the run in about 40 minutes and 30 seconds. So it's now around a 10 minute pace. That includes walking two minutes to hydrate at three miles. I noticed my heart rate was probably a little higher than I wanted to be, somewhere around between 145 and 155. So that's why I want to get the stride power meter to work. As I mentioned, it's on my foot. It's synchronized with my watch. I just haven't been able to enable the data field in my Garmin 6 to display the, uh, the wattage and tell me, am I working too hard? just right or not enough and especially on a trail run the uh, heart rate it's not really a great indicator fun fact dual major 
in economics and geology at a top university and so always loved whenever being outdoors kind of figuring out the history and the rock formations this is just great here so. coming up on six miles nice downhill you can see the burnt this is a a rail of the trail so this looks like a valley and going down on both sides and they had to build up the sperm to put the railroad tracks on of course they're now cleared this railroad ran from New York up to I believe Vermont so at six I'll walk again another hydration break doing these every three miles for now see how that works out just hit six miles in 59 minutes and 23 seconds so again a little bit below a 10 minute mile pace and obviously the walk here will put me back a little bit not not a big deal trying to maintain a between a 10 and 11 minute average for the run see how far i can go feeling a little hungry didn't uh got up late today I'm trying to set up this garmin phoenix six sapphire and my stride uh power meter got out the door late all i had was a yogurt a banana some coffee for breakfast a relatively light and one peanut butter and jelly sandwich on uh multi-grain bread so again very light and then on the way driving out here a kind bar so i'm gonna hydrate and then get going again Hey guys, just passed a 14 mile point. Uh, short walk here. Again, trying to every three miles plus or minus, trying to get some hydration, trying to do a little bit of walk. Got about a mile and a half back to my aid station, the car, and then we'll go from there. My foot, my right foot that I mentioned, still doesn't feel great. So another mile and a half and we'll see. Okay, let's get going here. in to my car the aid station over 15 miles I think I'm gonna call it here when I get to my car plan originally was to do three out and backs I did two but as I said my right foot something weirds going on can't put my finger on it but with two and a half weeks to go to my race uh, I'm not gonna risk it the haze in the barn the work is done at this point uh, going 15 versus going 23 not gonna make a difference at this point yeah from a psychological and 
point of view would it have boosted my confidence a little bit to do another 23 miler today i did one last sunday back to back so yes physically i'm gonna make a difference in my training happy with the workout gonna take off monday labor day and see how i feel tuesday and definitely taper next two weeks in preparation for my race feeling all banged up feeling all tired i think as of today i'm somewhere on 1800 miles or last year can't complain happy with that hey guys back in the car so I finished 15.33 miles in 2 hours 39 minutes and 49 seconds. That's a 10.25 mile pace. Uh, includes the uh, aid station brakes, uh, the brakes on the run, and walks. So that's not a net run time. I've run this 15 miler here at Larkin State Park. Uh, when it was cooler out without stops uh, a lot faster so today was about uh, another dress rehearsal for the Yeti 100 in two and a half weeks and the idea was to pace myself and basically uh, do everything that I would do doing a hundred miler and that pace is um, probably a little faster than I want to go out in uh, to run a sub 24 hour marathon uh, earn I should say to earn the nicer buckle and run sub 24 hours I need to run somewhere and I need to average somewhere around 14 minutes per mile so 1025 is quite significantly below that um, and you know I feel good uh, about behaving in the barn and the work is done time to taper uh, make sure my right foot uh, there's no issue there and I'm ready to go so I will sign off here and see you in the next one